imagine if we had a planetary computer that could tell us exactly what we needed to do to protect planet Earth. A system that was capable of providing us information about every tree, every species, all of our natural resources. How could we use all of that data to build a better world? True innovation hinges on our ability to see things differently. It means breaking boundaries and looking between the lines in an effort to solve some of the world's toughest challenges. Planetary scale innovation is needed now more than ever. Because if we truly care about each other, then we have got to care about this planet that we all call home. And that is something that we have been failing at for far too long. Consider this. In the time since I've been alive, the human population has almost doubled. Our species now uses more than 70% of all land on Earth to provide our food, our fiber, our water, minerals, and our energy. And these activities are fundamentally transforming the natural systems we all depend on. Species are going extinct tens to hundreds of times faster than they have before. And we're changing our climate systems in ways that could have catastrophic impacts. No matter how you view it, we're now facing one of the most existential challenges our species has ever had to think about. We have to somehow figure out how to mitigate and adapt to rapidly changing climates, ensure resilient water supplies, sustainably feed a human population rapidly growing to 10 billion, all while stemming a global and catastrophic loss of biodiversity. We may know how fast species are going extinct, but we don't actually know how many species there are or how many trees there are. We're facing our last real opportunity to ask ourselves the most fundamental of questions. How are we gonna solve these planetary scale challenges. And so as a citizen, as a scientist, and as Microsoft's chief environmental officer, I think the most important question to ask is not just what technology should be built, but how technology should actually be used. We're talking about a wide range of environmental concerns. These represent the world's biggest data challenges, the world's biggest compute challenges, and the world's biggest algorithmic challenges. And that's why we need solutions, like artificial intelligence, that are capable of being deployed at a planetary scale. So what is artificial intelligence and how can it help us? Well, at its core, AI is just an algorithm that solves for an objective function. It solves a problem. And the biggest problem we need to solve right now is how we as humans can continue to grow and prosper without destroying the very ecosystems that we all depend on. So while we're a long way from having all the answers, what I can tell you is that our vision for building a better future is already well underway. Using AI and the power of cloud computing, we can now convert what used to be considered inconceivable amounts of data about Earth's natural systems into actionable insights and information. And that intersection is where our greatest innovations are occurring. Most of our computer scientists know a whole lot about technology, but just a little about the environment. Our partners, though, know a whole lot about the environment, but aren't so deep on technology. It's that potential of people and technology coming together that inspired us to create AI for Earth, a platform that provides cloud computing, open source tools, and AI support to individuals and organizations striving to solve environmental and sustainability challenges, to spark people's curiosity and accelerate their work. Take, for example, the Chesapeake Bay Conservancy, a small nonprofit with a mandate to protect one of the most important watersheds in the United States. In order to do that, though, they and their partners needed to create a high-resolution map of where all the forests, fields, urban areas, and waterways actually were. They were able to do that, but it took them well over a year and a million dollars to complete the job. And by the time they were done, the landscape had already changed and the map was out of date. 
Through a partnership with AI for Earth, they were able to rebuild that 64,000 square mile map for a fraction of the cost in a fraction of the time. And this is just one of hundreds of projects that AI for Earth is empowering in areas like agriculture, water, biodiversity, and climate change with organizations all around the world. Take Wild Me. They're using computer vision and machine learning to convert wildlife photographs and videos into data that can be used to protect species on the verge of extinction. And then we have Ag Analytics, which combines farm data with machine learning to help farmers improve the sustainability of their practices while also maximizing their yields. And these are just a few examples of what's possible when people are empowered to scale their ideas and their solutions. One of the most difficult things to get across is just how much work it takes to turn something that provides such power and make it so simple to use. But that's really the beauty of AI, right? When it's done well, it just disappears into the background. AI for its approach has the potential to improve not just the environment, but also the economy. Research shows that deploying AI in just a few sectors has the potential to zero out the carbon emissions of Japan, Canada, and Australia combined, while also increasing GDP by 4.4% and creating almost 40 million new jobs. Those opportunities are what have motivated us to start laying the foundations for what I've come to think of as the world's first planetary computer. We're talking about an AI-driven platform that puts the full power of Earth-scale data right at people's fingertips, allowing them to come together and solve some of the greatest environmental and sustainability challenges we face today. Sure, it's an ambitious idea, but its promise is unprecedented. For the first time, we'd be able to fully understand what resources are where, how fast they're being depleted, and more importantly, what could and should we be doing with all of our natural resources. But this won't be built as a crystal ball. Instead, it will be a global portfolio of applications connecting trillions of data points to computing power and machine learning capable of converting that all into contextualized information. This is what Microsoft is innovating towards, what we're working with partners all around the world to help scale. The bottom line is, if we want to live on a healthy planet that provides a prosperous future for us all, then we need to know what it's made up of and what it's capable of. But before we do that, we have to have a conversation about ourselves, about the qualities that make us unique as a species, about compassion and empathy, and a drive for innovation. We have to agree that the objective function for the human species on Earth is to minimize our environmental impacts while maximizing the overall global human experience. And the good news is that if we can agree on that, then technology can help take us the rest of the way. The future is ours to decide.